When I'm programming, I think about the tessitura of the music, which is where the pieces sit in the individual voice lines and what that feels like to the singers. And I'm doing that partly for the audience and partly for the singers. So first of all, for the audience, I know that some people think that a women's choir concert is all going to sound the same, so I like to be part of dispelling that myth. And so we happily sing in unison in two parts, in three parts, in four parts. I just program music that I think works, and I don't worry about it all being the most difficult music. And for the singers, of course, what is a four-minute piece in concert is much, much longer in rehearsal. So I have to be very aware of how tiring it is for them and how, successful it, how successfully it works for their voices. So first of all, I think there's kind of a golden range in which we develop the sound of our choirs, and that's from middle C up to the E-flat of 10th higher than that. And in that range, a beautiful, beautiful unified sound is possible from all the voices. The intonation will be good because there's kind of a lift in the sound. The diction is very, very clear. And we have a very strong possibility of a strong emotional connection to the audience. Of course, the higher end of the range is a very exciting place to be as long as it's well written and well supported for the top voice. I think that could be a fantastic sound. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we can have a beautiful velvety sound in the lower end as long as the choir knows how it sings in its middle range and has created something that doesn't lose its life on the way down. So I asked the lector in this next segment to sing Low Hower Rose by Stephen Smith, which starts on middle C, and I asked him to sing voice by voice, starting with the second altos. <laughs> 